At 7.30, we got another one of two group of five teams still alive in the playoff conversation. And it's so weird because every other year I've done this, I've had a team from the group of five, whether it was Cincinnati last year or UTSA last year, that was in the playoff conversation deep, deep into October, November. And obviously Cincinnati ended up making the playoffs. Uh, when I did it the year before, I think, I forgot who it was. I think it was Marshall. Yeah, Marshall was a team that was I was talking about deep into October, early November-ish. And we're talking about right off the bat, not even October. We're down to two, ladies and gentlemen, two group of five teams. Coastal Carolina is one of them with a 3-0 and record. Charmin at Georgia State, which is 0-3. Coastal Carolina only favored by two points on ESPN. Two. Uh, let's talk about the stats real quick, and then I'll go down into both these teams. Grayson McCall. Quarterback for Coastal Carolina has gone 50 71, threw over 733 yards, nine touchdowns, one interception. Reese White on the ground for Coastal Carolina said 36 carries for 245 yards and a touchdown. And Sam Pinckney through the air has had 15 catches for 259 yards and a touchdown. Darren Granger through the air for Georgia State has gone 45 87, thrown for 640 yards, eight touchdowns, two interceptions, and has a 51.7% completion percentage. Tucker, I hardly know where Greg on the ground has had 52 carries for 203 yards and t two touchdowns. And Jamari Thrash has had 19 catches for 336 yards and a touchdown. Coastal Carolina is down in the series all time due to three. Uh, so very close series here. Last game went to Georgia State in 2021. No team has won back-to-back -back games. Keep that in mind because Georgia State won the last one. Um, both these teams have obviously started out very differently. Coastal Carolina... Won a pretty close game against Army uh, week one. And then week two, they lost, won an absolute thriller against Gardner-Webb in a game that a lot of people did not think was close. But Gardner-Webb kept that game respectable for the majority of it. Close to Carolina, ekes out a victory in the end. And last week, Buffalo kept them close for the majority of that football game before Coast to Carolina eked out another victory in the end. Coast to Carolina has not looked like the team we all know and love from a couple years ago um, that, has looked, that looked so dominant. You look at this on the other flip side for Georgia State. It has had a rough go of it, right? Week one, they draw South Carolina, and that's not exactly the best draw, but you kind of get blown out on the road. Then the next week, they lose a very close matchup against UNC, a UNC team that was beatable in week two, and they ended up not making the plays they needed to down the stretch to pull off the massive upset. And then not to mention last week, you lose an absolute soul crusher to Charlotte, a Charlotte team that had not looked good at all. Has, hadn't shown any signs of being alive at all on offense or defense. The, the 49ers pull off an absolute massive upset against Georgia State, and suddenly Georgia State's 0-3 and in desperate need of a victory. Um, and suddenly they draw the probably one of the hardest teams in the Sun Belt, although that's debatable with App State playing so phenomenally well and Marshall actually looking like a formidable football team, and not to mention South Alabama, who almost pulled an absolute thriller on the road against UCLA last week. Sun Belt looks like probably the hardest conference in all of Group 5. Let's mention James Madison, team that just transferred to Sun Belt is undefeated right now. Um, there's a lot of teams. UL Lafayette's normally consistently very good. Troy almost pulled out, out an absolute thriller against App State. There is a lot of good teams in the Sun Belt right now, and George State is in a rough position that they are not really one of them. Um, even Georgia Southern has an argument that they are one of the better teams in the Sun Belt right now. Um, Georgia State definitely looking like the odd man out in this conference. And just They desperately need a victory here. They just need one. At home, this would be a huge victory for them, and I just don't think they get it. I, don't, I think Coastal Carolina is a better team. I thought they were a better team against Gardner-Webb and Buffalo, so I think Georgia State does keep this close, but I do think Coastal Carolina wins, and I think they cover the two-point spread.